Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB specialist mobile application tester. We are in chapter five talking about automating the test executions and we have covered all the tutorials of this particular chapter. Now it's time we should look into some of the sample questions which will be a part of this particular chapter and can be asked to you as a part of the examination as well. So the pattern of the examination questions gives you an idea that how exactly the topics which you have just covered will be helpful to understand and how exactly it will be asked to you from the board itself during the examination. In order to get started, the very first thing is talking about the breakup of the questions within this particular chapter. So this chapter will consist of four questions out of 40 to be asked to you in the examination. So chapter five will have four questions which you need to take into account for your preparation. But the good part is that this chapter only consists of K1 and K2. So there is one K1 question from 5.3.1 and three K2 questions from 5.1.1, 5.2.1 and 5.4.1. But there are no K3 questions. So you don't really have to invest a lot of time getting into a deeper dive and understanding everything. No really needed uh, in terms of like having some practical hands-on of automation and a lot many other things. But yeah, still if you know the concepts, that's enough to get four marks out of 40 from this particular chapter. Let's have a look on some sample questions now. <coughs> So the very first question coming up here is which of the following statement does not correctly distinguish between the common mobile testing automation approaches. So here we are talking about number one thing is automation approaches. And at the same time, we are also highlighting to you which one is not exactly or correctly distinguishes between the common mobile testing automation approaches. So there are two different approaches available as a part of our syllabus. And we just want to make sure that how exactly agent based testing is different from device based testing. So let's look at the very first option here. Agent based testing approach is best used for executing mobile web application, whereas device based testing are best used for all type of mobile applications. And I think that's pretty much appropriate as per the concept because uh, these techniques are appropriately used according to the mobile web application and all sort of applications. So when it comes to agent based testing, the mobile web applications are the one which are good candidate of this particular approach. When it comes to any to several type of applications, which is like hybrid or native, you can make use of device based testing, which is going to be installed on the device. So it's particularly a device based testing approach. But web certainly can go with agent based because you can have a web browser and you can use the URL and do the same thing. So no, that's not the right option. B, agent based testing approach utilizes a string sent by the browser to spoof a particular browser, whereas device based testing approach has to be executed on a particular mobile gadget. Appropriately correct again, because when it comes to a web browser interaction, spoofing is one of the approaches. And yes, it is related to user agent uh, string, which is sent by the browser to spoof a particular browser. But whereas on the other hand, it is of course the real time devices, the gadgets which are required to be used to apply this approach, which is device based testing. In fact, the approach name will tell you the answer team. You don't really have to buy hard the answers or buy hard the questions or concepts. If you just remember that, okay, agent based testing is more about browser and uh, device based testing is more about gadgets, the uh, product. Coming to the next option C, native apps are best tested using the general web application automation tool, whereas mobile apps need specific tools. Now that's a little different thing you can feel that right so it is it is the mobile apps that are tested using general web application tools whereas native apps are the best tested using specific tools so it's just the white versa so it seems to be this is something where we are talking and contradicting with the concepts which we have explored and not appropriately the right answer anyways let's confirm with d before we go with the right answer the mode of operation for agent based testing approach is to mimic the browser characteristics Whereas that of the device based testing approach is to operate on the actual browser. Now that's also correct because uh, you do have inbuilt mobile device browsers and you would like to do that. So the agent based approach mimics exactly the browser whereas the device based approach runs on the actual browser which will be within the device and you certainly run there and see the behavior of it. So I think we got the right answer here. The right answer here is 
C. Native apps are best tested using the general web application automation tools, whereas mobile apps need specific test tools. No, it's the other way around. It's vice versa. Let's look at the question number two. Which of the following is not a major consideration during the evaluation of mobile automation test tools? So you do have the list of considerations right from the foundation level, plus some of them are also included here. So we need to select one option here as well. Let's go with option A, the test automation skill set of the tester who will be using the tool. I think again, that's a pretty much important thing because a tester need to be aware of the tool and what certain knowledge does the tester have, whether he will be able to adapt it, will he be able to start working on it? A little bit of mentor mentorship is always there, but will he be able to understand the tool and get started? Because we can't just give a complete new tool to the team and say to them, okay, take another two months to start learning that and then spend time. Now, let's come to B, the test automation requirements and complexity, such as use of new features, such as face ID, uh, fingerprint, chatbots by the app. Yes, of course, because it should be supported by the tool which you're using. So considerations list include such options which are unique to your device and app. So will the tool be helping you to do such things as well or interact with these components or no? Let's come to see, it is important to consider automation requirements and complexity because it's not always that automation reduces your time and effort doesn't mean that it will be simple to use. It does require some of your efforts to prepare the frameworks, create the script, maintain the script and a lot many other things. And what is your requirement of getting an automation tool? Is that to do um, unit testing? Is that to do uh, integration testing or system testing or maybe regression testing or, or performance testing, right? So you should be very much sure about your requirement and that's one of the uh, input and consideration for automation test tool. And I think we are pretty much sure with the D now that's the only option left, but let's have a look on it. Ability of the test framework to operate independently of other existing tools used in the organization. No. Other way around, we always try to make sure that whatever tools we are trying to adopt is able to sync and coordinate and interoperate between the other tools which we are using. It should not be independent of the other tools which are using because the data exchange can really happen if you are able to integrate the other tools which you're using with the new one which you're trying to use. So yes, that's something which is not matching with the requirement. So the final answer is D, ability of the test framework to operate independently of other existing tool used in the organization is not a consideration while evaluating the automation tools. Coming up to the next question is three, which of the following statements least support the use of a remote test lab? Now you need to recall your learning and understanding about remote test lab. And here we are again talking about least. Team, you should be worried about understanding that there are one keyword that is like not, least, best, most, right? These are something which can turn around the meaning of the question. So make sure that you read them very, very carefully. Otherwise you will certainly think that there were more than one option which seems correct because you didn't read the word not. Let's look at the option A. Testing during later stages of app development and which need to run on full device lab is best done on a remote device lab. Now that's pretty much correct, you know, because uh, remote test labs are best for advanced stages with full lab setup. So of course that will be something which will be useful to be conducted in the remote test labs and you would have a kind of interaction which is from a real time environment with having a full gadget interaction. So A is not the right answer. Coming to B, a remote device lab will most likely cover a small set of latest devices or operating system configuration to allow developers and testers to quickly validate early design stages of the app. Whenever it comes to early design, we prefer to have on-premises, which is like simulator and emulator. Now, testing against a local device lab is the approach that would typically serve a small range of devices or for either stages of the app testing. Now, initially, when we try to use, we prefer to have our own premise, which is with limited options, right? We don't want to have a great expenses being queued up for only devices. So on-premise is something which is different and remote is different. So you can, when you start with early testing, you can have affordable 
on-premise lab, which will be best suited for this. So this is something which is least likely to go with remote test lab. But let's confirm with C and D. C says remote device labs will ensure sufficient variety of device and operating system to enable teams to get a, a larger variety of test gadgets for their testing. Yep, remote test labs usually have wide variety of devices. So that's pretty much correct and in line with the remote test labs. And D, remote test labs are better when executing at large scale because they are typically designed to ensure that stability concerns are in most cases removed from the overall process. So yes, remote test labs are usually stable for large scale test. I think that makes pretty much sure that the right answer as per the given question is B, a remote device lab will most likely cover a small set of latest device operating system configurations to allow developers and testers to quickly validate early design stages of the app. So now I think that makes pretty much clear that what type of typical questions are we expecting and how we can be right at the same time. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.